So have you heard about Arkimoto? You may not have, but today you're going to. I'm getting an exclusive tour of their nondescript facility here before they go full-time into production. This is our, our open office space. We work together as a team. Uh, basically, we are constantly interfacing with fellow workers, building up a, a design from scratch, helping each other out, figure out problems, uh, developing solutions, sourcing materials, and uh, everything. We use SolidWorks primarily. Uh, it's, uh, inventor vault for uh, keeping track of all our files and everything. Uh, it's basically a typical engineering setup. Uh, a little quirky, it's a small group, so we can afford to be a little silly at times. We've got the TARDIS in the corner. Mm-hmm. Uh, the nice. Cyberman is keeping watch. Yep. He's, a, he's a security guard, complete with man bun. Got little workstations for everybody. Oh, the TARDIS is actually a bathroom. Yes, it is. Wow, okay. Yeah, we got a. Nice. We we're painting and we just had to do it. You know, yeah, I understand, I understand. Yeah. Okay. Mechanical sits on one side, the electrical basically sits on the other side. Work back and forth. Put up a little mountain range there to help help people stay focused and keep noise down a little bit. Got a, a small room here where we build the, the gear boxes. Basically, we've got bearings and uh, this is a, a raw casting we designed in in. Uh, or manufacture our own gearboxes. It's a, a dual motor setup that uses uh, one motor drives one wheel on the front, one motor drives the other. We have an electronic differential, so each gear train is completely separate. Um, the, there's an electronic sensor on the steering, that, so that when you go around the corner, it makes one wheel go a little bit faster than the other. Uh, essentially, uh, we can use that to our advantage quite often because we can use that as a uh, traction control device. Uh, also, uh, on the handlebars of the vehicle, we have a, a regen lever, which just like in a Prius or any other vehicles, when you put on the brake, it turns the motors into generators and puts some of that battery, or some of that electricity that you use to get up to speed, puts it right back into the battery. So you regenerate some of that electricity. Then this is our electronic room. Electrical build. This is where we build the, uh, the control modules, the batteries, that stuff. Okay. Safety station. Little kitchenette. Right now things are kind of in flux because yeah. we're not, not actually building. What you hear in here is our test fixture. So what you have here is a, a test stand. We're testing the motors in the gearbox setup. You know, one motor is running as, as a drive motor. We've got a shaft that links those two together, unlike in the vehicle where the two motors are completely separate. But this one, we've got a shaft linking them together. So one motor is acting as a drag, as we're regenerating, while the other motor is driving. And then every few minutes, just like right now, you just heard it, it changed direction. So that the right motor goes from a drive motor to become a regenerator. So that we're constantly putting one motor under stress and the other motor is, is driving. Yeah. And then vice versa. Right now we probably, we should have about 95,000 miles on this setup with this motor and gearbox. Uh, we took it apart at 75,000 miles and there's 
barely a trace of wear on anything, uh, which is really good. Yeah. And, uh, electric motors, of course, there's so many fewer moving parts than there is in the in internal combustion engine. But there just isn't anything to break. Yeah. What What's the liquid cooling that you've got running? Uh, the liquid cooling is more for the electronic control module. Okay. So you've got a little, little radiator, a little, uh, little electronic, uh, little pump for mm -hmm. pushing water through a cooling plate between the, the charger and the control module. Uh, we've got it plugged in, we've got a small battery bank down there, and the majority of the power is just being recycled. Yeah. Because one motor is driving, the other is a drag. So a lot of it is just going around in a circle, but there's always uh, intrinsic loss between, in the system. So we've got it plugged into a charger. The charger is constantly running, keeping the batteries topped up. And the batteries actually are what drive the, uh, the, the system. Okay. Uh, and so here's our our older version. This, the new version that we have is uh, about 25 pounds lighter and a couple of inches shorter, smaller than the original design that we had on the gearbox. Uh, we had a guy uh, up in Portland design a gearbox for us and designed for race cars. And then we took that design and we sent it to uh, a gear manufacturing company. They were able to optimize that design and shrink it and make it stronger and keep everything going. Okay. So, what you're hearing right now, this one, the motors are probably running about 20, 25 miles an hour right now. Uh, with no load on them, they make a little bit more noise than they do when you're driving on the street. When we first walked in, that was running at full bore, about 75 miles an okay. hour. Okay. So it's basically right now running through, let's say, a day-to-day -day commute kind of deal. Yeah, basically. Over and over. Driving up, you know, accelerating from a, a, a stoplight. Then decelerating for the next stoplight, accelerating for the stoplight. Right. And it's just switching back and forth which which motor is doing the driving. Okay. Uh, here's the vehicle. This is a engine uh, all generation eight. Uh, we've been doing some work on this one, so we've got the electronics opened up on it. You can see see all the cables sticking out. Mm -hmm. the accessible in the production version. This is, this, is, uh, this is basically what it is. Uh, well, approximately 100, 120 miles on a charge. Uh, our next generation batteries are going to be about, I believe it's 50 pounds lighter and 2 inches narrower. Okay. This is our, as I said, this is Generation 8. Uh, I started working here when we first started building Generation 4, which was uh, in 2010. At that time, we were looking to use uh, lead-acid batteries because the lithium-ion weren't quite to a point where we wanted to use them yet. Right. And lead-acid was so much cheaper. We had approximately 20 lead-acid batteries in the vehicle at that time to make about 50 to 60 miles of range. The new batteries take up the same space as about four lead acid batteries, and we should get between 100 to 120 miles. Okay. So the volume and the weight difference with, with the amount on um, just the last seven years is. So I see on it, it's got some different seating options, like looks like yeah. maybe a, a leather or a naga hide, mm -hmm. the pack on the back of the seat there, yeah. Yeah. and then on the kind of the handlebars, it looks like maybe a cell phone mount? Yeah, yeah, this is just a cell phone mount, it's a typical okay. RAM mount, you just stick your phone in there, Okay. you can you can link your, your phone via Wi-Fi or Bluetooth to the speakers, you can play your music, Yeah. Uh, Navigation through your phone. Most people nowadays seem to spend a lot of time using their phones rather than the screens on the computer or on the car. Yeah. And then you got your battery plugged in there. Mm -hmm. 
So the the plugins are they Arcimoto specific or no? This this particular plugin is a, the standard that you can you can plug them in into any other charging systems other than Tesla. Right. Tesla's, uh, uh, proprietary. But it also comes with an adapter, so you can plug this this vehicle into a regular 110 outlet. In fact, right now it's plugged into a regular 110 outlet there. Okay. Uh, you know, you change the adapter and you can uh, you can plug it into a 220. It uses the same cord, you just have a little adapter on it. Okay. Uh, it also will, will hook up to a fast charger uh, so that uh, you can charge it in even less time. Okay. Generally, most people are going to drive 20, maybe 30 miles a day in their commute, uh, which is the average of what people drive. Right. And if you do that, you'll probably take an hour to maybe two hours to charge up on 110. Half of that on 220. Basically, you know, drive back and forth to work, stop up at the store, pick up a six pack and a bag of Doritos. And Park it in the in the garage, plug it in. You never have to go to a, a, a gas station. You never have a, a, a low tank of gas. Yeah. You never have to have your oil changed, your uh, spark plugs replaced. You know all of these things that that nickel and dime you on an internal combustion engine don't exist. You don't have to do it. Right. It is considered a motorcycle uh, because it has three wheels. But because it's fully enclosed, in most states, you don't have to have a, a motorcycle license, and you also don't have to wear a helmet, because it has full roll feet. So if you had a, a single person in there, I mean, are you guys looking at um, more storage capacity? You've got the kind yeah. of the piece yeah. on the back I see here. As, as you can see, this one here has, has storage. Right. We also have, have a version of it that we've designed where the rear seat is deleted, and the entire rear portion of it becomes like a small delivery vehicle. Okay. Uh, deliver the mail, deliver uh, food, pizza, yeah. you know, whatever. It, well, I was, I was thinking, it, in Japan I've seen the little gas scooters with the big yeah. Yeah. kind of uh, holders, I guess, for pizza on the back. I could see converting the back seat to a delivery vehicle. Yeah, I saw a TV commercial a couple of months back where I believe it was Domino's has a, a special vehicle that's designed with the oven right in the back. You call yeah. them up, you can do the same thing. Okay. Basically, it's just like on a motorcycle. Push throttle. Generator braking, foot pedal brake, turn signal, forward and reverse. There's no no gears to shift because it's a single speed. Yeah. With electric uh, electric power, you don't really need a transmission. It uh, has all of its torque from you know, very low RPM all the way up to, to full bore. So it's really fun because you, you crank that throttle and you get this it pushes you back in the seat. Yeah. What's the top speed? <clears throat> this one will do 75 on the freeway. Uh, our target goal is 80. Okay. And we're only limited there because of uh, the, the speed of the, the RPM of the motors themselves is right. longevity. You don't want to spin them up too fast. Right. So do you guys do testing here? I mean, you've got drive like a drive facility you do? I've seen the videos um, where you're kind of driving through the alley. Yeah, we we do a lot of driving in city traffic and stuff like that, but we also have a, a, a company that allows us to use the like, five-acre uh, parking lot that they have. It, okay. It's empty most of the time and go out there and have it. And we've done quite a bit of testing on that facility. Uh, when we move to our, our new building, we should have, I believe it's like a Okay. We have taken them down to Laguna Seca and uh, down, up and down the coast and all different places too. Alright, so now you're thinking that ended abruptly. 
So the next bit of video that I had from Arkhamoto actually was a little bit more proprietary than I wanted to show at this time because they're still, still a relatively new product and they haven't done manufacturing, got it out there. So I didn't want to show too much on that just to wet your whistle a little bit and tease you. So what are you thinking about Arkhamoto right now? Will it change the vehicle technology and the electric technology for the future? I really hope so. So they're going to move into a new facility in a couple months and start mass production. You can check out more of their details and get some reviews and all that at arkamoto.com. And I showed you plenty of the logo so you know how to spell it. Their base model of the SRK is around $12,000. And you saw some of the questions I asked about uh, adding in extra pieces like luggage racks, storage, all that stuff. A lot of it, what we didn't show is that they have a lot of really great ideas for this product. So check them out. Keep updated, and if you're looking for something in the city mobility where you can do less than 100 miles in a day between charges, really a cool vehicle to use. So that's it for this time. If you have questions on Arkhamoto, again, check them out at arkhamoto.com. They're a great group of people. We'll see you next time.